Yes, most of the leaks were true, but leaks only tell one part of a story, and this printer is way more than just a few numbers plugged together on a spec sheet. So let's go back to the beginning. Despite the recent backlash and controversy regarding the Bamboo Labs firmware update, personally I was still very much interested in their upcoming printer. Not because I support or endorse those changes, I'm just a bit of a hardware designer that likes to tear down printers to see how they're made. Holy balls, Batman, look at that. <laughs> Luckily for me, they offered an early sample. I got it out the box and a me- oh. What the fuck is this? Yep, yeah, that's literally what I felt at the time, but don't worry. Two separate shipments, printer arrived in a separate package. Here we go, let's try again. It came in this enormous box, weighing over 35 kilos, so making it pretty difficult to move around, and it recommends two people. But with nobody else around, I had to YOLO this one on my own. In addition to the machine, they also sent me the AMS HT, AMS 2 Pro, a selection of hot ends, the combined cutting and pen tool, laser tool, a bunch of testing materials, and a filter box for the laser operation. Before we go any further, just so you know, Bamboo Lab reached out to me and requested that I create a teardown of this machine, like I have done recently with the Prusa Core 1 and other printers. They have provided the printer, materials, accessories and stuff free of charge, but I've not been paid and they're not trying to control anything that I say. There simply wouldn't have been time to do a full teardown between when I got this printer and the release date. So today I'm going to be covering my first impressions of the machine and highlight some of the cool features which I've noticed in setting it up and starting using it. And then in the following video, we'll do the teardown. So let's get into it. The F2T comes in two configurations, the base configuration and a laser configuration. The laser version comes with an additional camera, which is like almost 4K, but has a weird resolution and presumably the laser accessory and tools. And of course the green panels for the printer. It's roughly 500 by 500 millimeters across the base and then 626 millimeters tall without any AMS units on the top. For 3D printing, you've got a volume of 325 by 320 by 325, changing a little bit depending on the nozzle configuration. It utilizes a pair of all metal hot ends with hardened steel extruder gears and nozzles, with a pair of 0.4 millimeter nozzles included, plus 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter nozzles being available. The extruder design is based around the Bamboo Lab's new high precision permanent magnet synchronous motor, which we'll take a good look at in the teardown. The build plate is a fairly standard design, spring steel PEI, able to go up to 120 degrees Celsius. Their reported speeds are 1000 millimeters per second peak at 20k acceleration. The machine includes a chamber heating system, as well as ventilation systems to allow cooling and therefore printing PLA without having to open the door. Using those aforementioned specifications, this printer is able to print PLA, PETG, TPU, PVA, BVOH, ABS, ASA, PC, PA, PETG, carbon or glass field PLA, PETG, PA, PET, PC, ABS or ASA, PPACF or GF, PPS, PPSCF or GF. Hopefully that's most of the things that you'll need. In terms of the slicer, of course, it's sort of locked now to Bamboo Studio, although they do say they support third-party slices with exported standard G-code such as Super Slicer, Prusa Slicer and Cura, but certain advanced features may not be supported. Notably, Orca Slicer has been omitted here, and I'm not sure what features you don't support in standard G-code. Network connectivity is via Wi-Fi only with no LAN connection available. Of course, there's also touchscreen, control board, some internal memory, blah, 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 blah. And next up, we have the AMS2 Pro, which is an upgraded version, as you might have guessed, of the AMS. The overall size, weight, usability, functionality, all very similar, but this one now has drying capability up to 65 degrees Celsius. So that allows for removal of moisture from your filaments through these adaptive ventilation stuff. It's pretty cool. Next up, we have the AMS HT. The overall fall factor is kind of the same, but it only supports one spool. The main difference here is that this supports drying up to 85 degrees Celsius. The big issue I've noticed so far though, is that you don't seem to be able to dry and print at the same time, which to me seems like the whole entire point. In addition to printing functionality, this machine can now offer laser and cutting functionality. So the laser module, is currently 10 watts with apparently a 40 watt one coming soon-ish, although I have no idea when. The machine itself includes a number of additional detection mechanisms, including flame detection, temperature detection, a door sensor, 
laser module installation detection, and a manual safety cutoff switch. For the cutting module, this actually can support blades or pens. It's a module that fits to the same tool head with a cutting area of 300 by 285 millimeters and obviously no Z height adjustment there and includes sticky mats for a light grip and strong grip depending on the material you're cutting. While many of you, like me, are probably more focused on the 3D printing functionality of this machine, I do want to cover laser safety quickly. This machine does have a class 4 laser. That means potential serious permanent harm to eyes and or skin even without direct contact. That's even upon reflection from a material during cutting. Is this safety of this new laser part of the integrated changes with Bamboo Studio and security locking down and third party features? Maybe, maybe not. What I can say at least is that they seem to have taken some sort of measures to prevent you looking at it. Firstly, it does have this green optical enclosure. This isn't easy for me to test, but in theory, it reduces by a significant amount the light being emitted. You don't want to stop it completely because then you don't know if it's emitting or not and can result in you opening the door when it's still on. Disappointingly though, in the stuff that I've received, there are no laser safety glasses, which really, for me, is something that I would expect as a minimum when you have a product with a class 4 laser. There are also a number of features regarding fire hazards when laser cutting, but I want to save these for a later day as it's going to take a bit more investigation to know how well they're working. Now, 3D printing stuff. Let's start with molten material. So, this printer uses a dual nozzle system. The extruder drives each of the nozzles independently, and the one that's not in use lifts up out of the way and can be cooled down separately. Each of the two hot hands has a separate entry point at the back of the printer. Each of these entry points can be attached to either just a single filament on the spool holder at the back, of which you can have two, allowing you to have multi material capability without any AMS. You can also link either of these to multiple AMS or AMS HT units, allowing for up to, I think, 24 separate filaments at any one time. However, what you can't do with this system is feed from one AMS unit to two nozzles. Ultimately, this just adds a little bit of complexity to planning your AMS configuration and where you put filaments rather than just dumping them anywhere like you might have done previously. This is reflected in a number of changes in Bamboo Studio, which have been implemented in order to help manage the arrangement of materials and the print on the sheet. The dual nozzle system should provide some speed increases. So I've done some tests using slicer estimated times, comparing one, two, four, and 16 material benches. And I identified that whilst the H2D on single filament is a little bit slower than X1 Carbon, it's not by much. When it comes to very high multi-material setups, you can save quite a bit of time on very long prints, but your overall material usage will be fairly similar, as we saw with the high multicolor print. However, the very optimal solution here is two color prints. Not only did we use significantly less material, we also printed it in half the time. This is the advantage of having switching nozzles versus having to pause, purge, and resume after each filament change. Okay, next up, let's talk hot ends. Up to now, we've had basically two different designs of hot ends. Firstly, the one on the X and P1 series, where we had the cold side, hot side, heater, thermistor, and fan all integrated into a single unit. And then the A series came along, the smaller, cheaper printers, and they had a very different hot end design where you just had the cold side, hot side, and nozzle kind of all integrated together, but the thermistor and heater kind of more integrated into the printer. This made switching hot ends very, very easy. You simply unclipped it, pulled it out, put a new one in, and clipped it back in. On the new H2D series, we have another new hot end design. However, it seems to be fully backwards compatible with the A series. The exterior form factor is basically identical, there's the same magnet in the same place with the same holes, the same overall shape. However, the cold side is a slightly different shape on the bottom, allowing for a longer melt zone whilst keeping the overall length of the hot end from top to tip exactly the same. The approximately 22% increase to the length of the melt zone will probably increase flow rate by around 15 to 20%. The other really cool thing about these nozzles is the labeling. Yeah, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is really cool. Because you can see the cold side where these hot ends are labeled, you can not only see from the outside of the printer what nozzles are installed, 
but the camera can also read this little QR code next to it, allowing the printer to read and send to firmware what nozzles are installed. And it seems to work really well. It's such a cool feature. The next feature that I think is much cooler than many people will expect is the heating and ventilation system. And you might be thinking, oh, Wahoo, it's got some fans like every other printer. But no, it's, it's really, really different, I think. So first off, it has an active heating system. So this is not just the bed getting warm and the inside of the printer therefore also getting warm. It has a heater specifically there to make the inside of the printer much warmer. This is also a recirculating heater, so it doesn't take cold air and have to heat it up. It just reheats the same air around and around until it gets to the temperature needed. This will help in the energy efficiency as well as maintaining consistent temperature over the length of the print. Due to the integration of air filters within that recirculation circuit, it should also mean that you don't get a buildup of the VOCs and any particulates during that printing process, kind of just being emitted as you open the door at the end. When it comes to the cooling, this is not an active cooling system. It's not like a fridge inside the printer, but what it does allow for is good airflow through the machine when you need cooler temperatures inside, such as for printing PLA. The cool thing about this is it has automatic vents that open up when it knows it needs to have this cool air circulation, and this air is still filtered as it goes through and out the exhaust. This is just so cool. Seeing these flaps open up, just like, <laughs> it's just awesome. We'll be able to take a detailed look at how these automatic vents work, probably some kind of servo, when we do the teardown. While I don't have a good measuring tool for this, the sound levels of the H2D are certainly much better than the X1 Carbon. Taking a look around the printer, there are a few reasons why. Firstly, the outer panels are now made of plastic instead of metal, which will reduce the amount of ringing and dampen some of the noise. Pretty much all the fans are attached using these soft rubber mounts, isolating their vibrations from that of the frame and body of the printer. And there's no more carbon rails on the x-axis. Instead, it's all steel rails, which, although a little bit noisy still, are a bit quieter than the previous carbon ones. Once the printer starts moving, you'll also notice the nice wibbly wobbly rubber feet, which again help significantly isolate the printer from any table or desk it's on, which normally would transfer quite a bit of noise. Lastly, I want to leave you with a bunch of quickfire information and facts about the machine that I've noticed, which you may find useful or interesting. Firstly, the door now opens to 180 degrees. The screen on the front is not removable, but can be rotated between vertical and 60 degrees. There's a cool new little design of nozzle brush. The status bar at the front of the print bed doubles as a progress bar during printing. There is no micro SD card slot. Any external storage is now via USB. All the AMS systems, excluding AMS Lite, are forwards and backwards compatible. The width of AMS2 Pro plus AMS HT is basically identical to the width of the printer. Perfect. There's a new beeping tone that's created by the motors for when the printer turns on. This might just be the coolest bed plate I've ever seen, but it's not for 3D printing on. I'll show you in another video how it works. Lastly, there's a new alignment system for the build plate, making it easier to align it to the bed. It's right now less than two hours till I need to release this video, so I'm going to do that. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. Please check out Vector3D.shop to help support the work I'm doing. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss the teardown.